So I am especially interested in the geometry of fundamental physics. I thought about it a bit, and I wanted to sketch out an idea for you that I had that's called Lie group cosmology. The idea of Lie group cosmology is to consider a single Lie group that then deforms and thereby gives all the geometric structure of space-time, all the standard model fields, and gravity just by having a single deforming Lie group that then you can describe using quantum mechanics. So how does this work? Well, if you think about a Lie group, it's described, uh, its local geometry is described by a Lie algebra valued one form over the Lie group manifold called the mara carton form. Now, to have a deformation of a Lie group, you vary that Lie algebra valued one form and allow it to become something else. So it's also a Lie algebra valued one form over this new deforming manifold. But you don't allow just any deformations of the manifold. What you do is you maintain the integrity of a subgroup, H, of your original Lie group, G, and allow the manifold to deform over a coset space, uh, G mod H. Um, and this description works very well. Uh, for example, if you just want to describe gravity, you can start with the 10-dimensional Lie group spin 1-4 and select H to be the Lie group spin 1-3 as a subgroup, mod out by it, and you'll get a four-dimensional De Sitter space-time as a space embedded in spin 1-4. Now you can allow the, this Lie group to deform over this embedded subspace, which goes wavy, and obviously it does because here we are and here's everything around us, so we're in lumpy De Sitter space-time. And this, uh, this deformation is described by this, what's called the Carton connection, describing the deformation, which consists of a H connection for the principal H bundle, which is what, which this looks like the entire space of that, but it now includes the base manifold as part of it. Um, that's W, but it also has this gravitational frame part over what was De Sitter spacetime and now is allowed to vary, that's, uh, that's the E. So this works great for gravity, but it's a problem if you want to make this Lie group larger and think about all the other fields, because what happens is when you select out a subgroup, but then your coset space is going to be very high dimensional, and it's not suitable for space time. So you have to do something a little strange, which is, uh, I, this is a generalization of Carton geometry, um, and what you have to do is you have to consider that you want to let this Lie group vary only over a four-dimensional subspace which you identify with space-time in the Lie group. So what this means is you get another piece as well as the, uh, the spin connection and gauge field connection and the gravitational frame. You get another piece that is a, one, a Lie algebra valued one form field in the deforming Lie group, but it is directed orthogonal to space-time in what was the coset space directions. And since it's not a one form uh, in space-time, but it is a field that can be described in space-time. Uh, it's actually, as a one form, it's a anti set of anti-commuting fields uh, valued in the Lie algebra. And if you happen to miraculously find a Lie algebra that's exceptional and has a bunch of spinorial degrees of freedom for its Lie algebra, then in fact what you can get is the physical fermions of the standard model here it, described in a natural geometric way just using the deformations of one Lie group. So if you take the curvature of this generalized connection, which has all these three parts. Um, you get a lot of familiar friends. You get the Riemannian curvature, you get the torsion, you get the covariant derivative of the Higgs field, you get the gauge field curvature, and you get the covariant derivative of the fermions with respect to all these others. Uh, you take this nice curvature and you build what seems to be the most natural action uh, over the deforming Lie group using the, uh, this generalized Carton connection to make your Hodge dual and you write down this, uh, this action over the deforming Lie group, and you can actually integrate over the degrees of freedom orthogonal to space-time, and therefore end up with an integral over space-time uh, that's quadratic, which will give you a quadratic action with the fermions, which is a little strange, but a couple of people have written papers about that, and it sort of makes sense. So you can use that to make uh, quantum field theory amplitudes and see if you can get a sensible theory out of that. Thank you very much. I'm done. <laughs>